Well, it's 15, 15, <coughs> 15. There is no certainty that after death we may not be born in the lower realms. The protection from such terrible life in the three jewels alone. So we must make from the practice of going for refuge and ensure that its precepts are never be undermined. So this is big topic okay so this will explain about uh, taking refuge to the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha so so we have this uh, we have protector Buddha Dhamma and Sangha so therefore, uh, in order to protect for us, we have to rely on the, somebody who already achieved enlightenment, somebody who realized direct emptiness and realization of bodhicitta and emptiness. So <coughs> we have four points, right? First, identifying the causes of taking refuge. They can identify an object of refuge. Third, way to take refuge. And fourth, having take refuge, stage of training the mind. So we have four points, you know. First, identifying causes of taking refuge. And then second, object of refuge. And third, way of taking refuge. And fourth, Having take refuge, stage of training or keep precept. So four point. So number one is <coughs> uh, cost of taking refuge. So every product has cause and effect, right? Without cause, no no effect, right? Even external things, right? We are talking about external cause, then it will bring result or fruit. So this cause is not external cause, it is internal cause. So internal cause, there, there are also internal result, cause, effect. So it is relationship between cause and effect or cause and result. So this cause is not external cause, but internal cause, taking refuge. So there are two, <coughs> two causes. First, Cause is uh, <coughs> the understanding. There are three different types of causes, right? Understanding, uh, uh, suffering, suffering of the three lower realms, understanding the suffering of cycle of existence, understanding the suffering of human beings. So these three causes. Right. First, taking refuge, right? Cause, understanding, suffering of three lower realms, animal, hungry, ghost, hell beings, understanding, suffering of samsara, <coughs> samsaric nature. Is, samsara is uh, produced by delusion and karma. Understanding the suffering of human beings. So, we have many different types of suffering, mental, physical suffering. So, this Three, understanding the nature of suffering. Once you realize the understanding the nature of suffering, then second cause <coughs> is uh, uh, you you generate great faith because I don't want suffering. You know, I want to escape from suffering. So I want how to escape from suffering. It's the not like blind faith, 
it is based of the valid reason you know you, you generate faith it's not blind faith it just generate faith is based on valid cognition of the valid reason what is the base of valid reason is because you are suffering you, know? you don't want to suffer <clears throat> nobody wants suffering we are still suffering you know so so therefore <clears throat> what we should do is so you use the valid reason is we will die in any, any time but when will we when we die you know we don't know where we will be reborn right and then we <laughs> we have no we don't know where we will be reborn we don't know uh we will be reborn and it's not our hand it totally depends on the karma you know karma karma we throw you into the river so if you uh, create good karma it will throw you into the good river if you create bad karma negative karma it will throw you into the lower river so because of that is the valid reason you using this then <clears throat> uh use that valid reason and i generate faith and trust to the triple gem buddha namo sangha so this is the course of taking refuge you understand what is very important when you are we, we, when you are meditating on the we do every day i take refuge in buddha namo sangha sangha chana but we should have three points four points number one courses of taking refuge which is two courses now right now i didn't find object of taking refuge what is the object of taking refuge is buddha dhamma and sangha so buddha dhamma and sangha is the uh, object of refuge so this now buddha means not necessarily historical buddha you know you can be buddha you know when your mind is purified you become buddha when the mind is deluded then you in the samsara right when you realize your own nature of the mind you are buddha when your your nature of mind is polluted not nature polluted but te- temporarily because of afflicting emotion <clears throat> like uh, we can't see the blue sky and the blue sky is always there you know it is temporarily covered by the clouds similarly our nature is pure from the beginning to the end but temporarily uh delusion negative mind affect emotions cover we are unable to see right so therefore <clears throat> buddha is not necessarily historical buddha you will be you can be buddha right? you have buddha nature you have nature of the mind you know if your mind is purified then you become buddha if your mind is unpurified then you are in a samsara you know you know what i mean so therefore buddha <clears throat> so here uh, this one object of buddha you know, so this is the uh, uh maitreya buddha text very important we study at the monastery you know. definition of buddha definition of dharma definition of sangha which is explained by maitreya buddha is a uh, text called the sublime continuum of the great vehicle that text is composed by maitreya uh, maitreya buddha so this text <clears throat> will tell you the definition of the buddha definition of dharma definition of sangha so first i will read the text non produce spontaneously achieved not realized by the conception of others endowed with wisdom compassion and power only buddha has two purpose so these are the eight characteristic of the buddha eight characteristic of the buddha so what is the definition of buddha 
definition of buddha uh, definition of buddha jivali is ultimate source of taking life which have the eight qualities which eight qualities non produce and so on this is the definition of buddha buddha according to so now <coughs> eight characteristic right so number one is non produce non produce so non produce means the nature of buddha is nature of buddha is unconditioned and permanent nature of buddha it means emptiness of buddha is unconditioned permanent emptiness of mind is unconditioned permanent right so uh <clears throat> beyond birth and decay it has no beginning no end but its nature is pure and faultless that's the lama no characteristic of the buddha lama two is spontaneously achieved so that means buddha accomplish all activities effortlessly you know don't have any effort effortlessly they are free from limitation of the conceptuality no conceptual mind right but this mind is non conceptual mind we have conceptual mind yeah. when there is conceptual mind then image come mental yeah. image thinking is conceptual mind yeah. but buddha mind is non conceptual mind everything appears to buddha mind is effortless no need any effort so that is number 2 spontaneously number 3 not relied by the conception of others the quality of buddha is beyond our ordinary people's mind it's impossible you know, for us to to realize the quality of buddha it is beyond our ordinary people's mind endowed with wisdom so this means wisdom perceiving two truth conventional truth and ultimate truth so buddha realized conventional truth and ultimate truth simultaneously so in the ordinary people when we realize conventional no ultimate when we realize ultimate no conversion because of dual mind you know dualistic mind so so buddha mind of no dual mind right it is pure mind so every phenomena everything appears to buddha is clear no image uh, no conceptual right it is just like uh, you looking in the uh, screen you know television just see very clearly everything appears to buddha mind is very clearly so uh uh wisdom <coughs> perceiving two truths conventional truth and ultimate truth based two truth right method wisdom and uh, emptiness result true body wisdom body and form body so this is based two truth Uh, method wisdom emptiness result nature body and uh, form body so base base to two so two <coughs> so two two and the uh, endowed with compassion you know compassion because the buddha has the uh, compassion to others the path that he has perceived his compassion is not like our compassion right our compassion is mixed with the attachment mm. you know, our compassion cannot extend to the enemies right enemy we have no compassion when you see enemy you get angry right no equanimity stranger you know what so our compassion is mixed with the attachment the buddha compassion is 
limitless compassion for everybody you know so <clears throat> and endowed with the power so power because the buddha has power for helping sentient beings from the suffering and removing from the afflictive emotions because he will give teaching four noble truths eight four noble path to a link of interdependent origination and we will be able to uh, remove from the suffering and afflictive emotions so this uh endowed with power so this six qualities now these having have two purpose first three purpose is one self one self and then second three purpose is purpose for other so there is eight qualities you go to eight qualities of the buddha <laughs> definition of the <clears throat> buddha jubilee is ultimate source of taking life which have eight qualities the eight qualities are is non produced spontaneously achieved not realized by the conception of this endowed with wisdom endowed with compassion endowed with power and having two purposes so these are the eight characteristic of the buddha so that the buddha the buddha now dharma dharma <clears throat> what is the definition of dharma same like matter text inconceivable free from both and non conceptual pure clear antidote to the opposite free from attachment and a mean to that being defined by the true truth is the dharma so definition of buddha the definition of um dharma jewels completely purified true in the continuum of the superior being who has any of eight qualities such as being conceived conceivable and so on so that is the uh dharma buddha dharma definition of dharma eight qualities So number one quality is uh, <clears throat> inconceivable. Inconceivable. That is a true cessation of the object of meditating, meditative exploits of only superior being and beyond the conceptual ordinary beings. When somebody who is directly realizing emptiness is beyond the ordinary sentient beings. the experience will not express about somebody directly realizing perceiving emptiness where so that ordinary people mind beyond beyond ordinary people mind in the conceivable <clears throat> free from both that is the true cessation of free from uh, both means free from contaminant karma and delusion too so contaminant karma and delusion non conceptually in that tree true cessation is not superimposed by the wave of concept because it is not a mind it is permanent like not mind it is permanent <coughs> because it is emptiness emptiness is permanent ha huh? emptiness is a permanent phenomenon right? the permanent phenomenon cannot produce cannot change right in permanent is changeable temporarily changing right so the emptiness nature is permanent is always there you know and cannot change <clears throat> uh pure in that true path is pure of pure of delusion you know no delusion delusion keep and uh, clear that true path clearly perceive conventional and ultimately directly entitled to the opposite the true path is 
and the two to three poison. Ignoring anger and attachment. <clears throat> Free from attachment and mean to that specific freedom from attachment refers to the true cessation and mean to the path of cessation, vulnerable to the truth of suffering, to the origin of suffering, to the path, to the cessation. So that is the Dharma Jewel, eight characteristics of the Dharma Jewel. <clears throat> now eight characteristics of Sangha, right? Sangha is same text, right? By reason of purity, perceiving as it is, all that is, and the inner realization of both, assembly of the wise, irreversible ones are endowed with unsurpassable qualities. So, the definition of Sangha is Sangha refuge is superior beings possessing any of eight qualities of realization of freedom. That is the definition of Sangha. So Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Eight characteristics of Buddha Eight characteristics of Dharma, eight characteristics of Sangha. <clears throat> so first uh, is perceiving, means a pure direct, direct perceiving emptiness of ultimate truth. All that is to the superior perception of the conventional truth of the phenomena. And their inner realization both means inner realization in the continuum of the sup superior knowing whole ultimate and conventional truth. Realization is implied as a quality is the realization of each of above three. Purity is free from the obscurations of the liberation. Obscurations of liberations are delusion, right? Ignorance, anger, attachment. So when you free from this poison, you escape from the samsara and liberation. Right? <clears throat> purity, being free from of creations, the purity of being free from of creations to the omniscient mind. Omniscient mind, of creation, omniscient mind is. Remember, we I, I mentioned you three poisons, right? Ignorance, anger, attachment. So the imprint of ignorance, imprint of attachment, imprint of anger, and appearance of inherent existence to the five sensory mind is of creations to the omniscient mind. So pure, pure, Buddha. Everything being freed after it by the inferior that is holding the lesser goal of liberation, purity of the freedom, uh, freedom from superior respect, object of abandonment, first four qualities, class being and realization, last four of freedom, four realization, four freedom. So that, <coughs> that is the one. <coughs> Eight qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, okay? So, you understand what I'm saying? First, what do you need? Causes of taking refuge, right? So, two causes of taking refuge. Once you read this cause, and you develop faith, it's based on the valid reason. And then you take refuge to Buddha and Sangha, Dhamma, and Sangha. So, then you identify what is Buddha, what is Dhamma, what is Sangha. So then you realize definition of Buddha, definition of Dharma, definition of Sangha, right? So then, <clears throat> then uh, then you way of going for taking refuge, number th three point. So way of going taking refuge means the second cause, right? Second cause is you generate faith, and because of faith. <clears throat> in the ability of the three jewels, 
Yeah, but the correct way of going for refuge is to properly know the quality of the Buddha, quality of the Dharma, quality of the Sangha. What is the quality of Buddha? What is the quality of Dharma? What is the quality of Sangha? Quality of Buddha is <clears throat> yeah, quality of Buddha's body, his speech and mind. You know. His body is different from our body. His speech is six remember six speech. His mind perceives past, present, simultaneously, everything, you know. That's the quality of the Buddha. Quality of Dharma is Dharma is uh, uh, Cessation of the afflictive emotion, delusion. So Dharma is but afflictive emotion, delusion. And then finally you remove all this. Quality of Sangha is to achieve realization of the um, part of seeing, you know, can go like this. So these three qualities. Quality of Buddha, quality of Dharma quality of Sangha. <clears throat> so this is the way of going refuge. You understand the quality of the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, right? <clears throat> and number four, this body, having take refuge, right? Then what you should do? You, you train your mind. You take refuge, right? First you you realize <clears throat> causes of taking refuge. Then you identify object of refuge. Understand the characteristics of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Way of taking refuge, you understand the quality of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, then you are taking refuge. Right. Now, having taken refuge, then you make commitment. I can keep precept. What are, there are many, many different types of commitment. I can't read all this, but I will tell you. If you take sincere taking refuge to the Buddha, then you should not take refuge other than Buddha. If you take refuge to the Dharma, you should not harm other sentient beings. If you take refuge to the Sangha, you know you should not go with bad company or like this. The precept, you know what I mean. So then, <clears throat> when you take refuge. Then, uh, what is the benefit of the taking away? There are many, many benefits. First, you will, <laughs> when you take refuge, you will become Buddha, enter the Buddhist life. You become Buddha. Uh, become Buddha, whatever you become Buddhist. Taking refuge is the foundation of the old precept. We take all the precept. If there is no taking, then we cannot receive any precept. Right? So you take refuge to Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you know, then <clears throat> uh, uh, you will decrease your delusion, afflictive emotion. When you take refuge to Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you will accumulate the merit, good karma. When you take refuge to Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you will not fall into the law realm. Always when you take refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you know, you will achieve all your success, worldly, ultimate, easily. When you take refuge to Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, you know, you will not harm by the external, uh, internal uh, obstacles. When you take refuge to Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you know, then you will, <coughs> uh, you will achieve your goal, achieve your liberation very quickly. So this is the four point. We will be uh, taking refuge. So we have four points, right? <laughs> First, causes of taking refuge. Second, identifying object. Third, way of taking refuge. Fourth, having taken refuge stage of training so these four points so whenever you say i take refuge within sangha you should remember this four <clears throat> taking refuge 
is very powerful from buddhist perspective you know our perspective it is very powerful you know let me tell this story then you know <laughs> how powerful it is in tibet right in tibet long time ago the story about uh, thief come to the monastery thief you know so he tried to steal from the monastery and then they arrested thief and uh, you know the discipline <laughs> and he was uh, want to give some punishment so he thought what i should do this he still the you know things from the monastery so he a very big like this he stick like this <laughs> lay down <laughs> he thought maybe i take refuge in buddha you know bang <laughs> <laughs> i take refuge in dhamma he do one you know and he, i take refuge sangha he he do one three times but if he four times he is gone and die dead <laughs> and then uh, he said oh i'm glad only there are three refuge <laughs> if there are four i'm gone you know i'm dead so he is thief you know he is he has no faith nothing but i take refuge buddha he did one dama he did one sanga he did one and then my time he ran away and he went under the you know bridge in tibet the big bridge in tibet under the bridge <clears throat> and on the bridge midnight time all the hungry ghosts going to be meeting you know ghost are going to be meeting he was so scared right no faith but reciting i tag refuge of buddha <laughs> whole night he is just repeating this all this is spirit you know they can't cross <clears throat> can't cross the bridge and then they look you know, he is he, <laughs> he is reciting all this prayer they say you get out from here you know we can't, <laughs> we can't cross the bridge you know what we so the, so this man no understanding what is buddha what is dhamma but he was repeating have this power you know if we have faith and this are then no question you know you know what i mean so that is teaching to mind okay okay thank you very much